Greetings everyone, it's Wolf King. What's up? This video is going to be a video response to this kid named Laird Broken who talks about uh, Christianity. Hello there, my name is Leonard and today I just want to talk with you about or share with you um, actually what is Biblical Christianity and also to start off actually, why Jesus? Why Jesus? A lot of people say, you know, why do I need to be saved? Well, let's start off with actually where it all started, with the story of Adam. Um, when Adam was in the garden, everyone knows the story, he ate the forbidden fruit. In response to... Yeah, the whole talking snake and all that, by the apple. ...that uh, the Lord said to him in Genesis three seventeen, he said, To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree, about which I commanded you, you must not eat of, cursed is the ground because of you, through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. God was clearly, he was punishing Adam for a wrongdoing, for a trespassing that had occurred. And yeah, and, and the real logic is amazing. The, apparently, the God of the Old Testament didn't have the good um, logic skills to realize. And if he didn't want him to eat from the tree of knowledge, he wouldn't have put the tree there. More importantly, I mean, how do you, how can you actually prove that there was a literal Adam and Eve because such a thing such as, there, there are 7 million people, well, there are 7 billion people on this planet. How can two humans produce 7 billion people? The mutation rate w would have been high and incest would have been inevitable. That would have led our species to, to infection, to disease, and ultimately sterility. So... Don't really uh, understand the basis. I mean, you you could say it's it's more metaphorical, and but that would that that just kills the argument right there. And to continue on, he said later on in verse twenty three. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. Um, so God makes it actually pretty clear that we do not disobey His commands because He He will punish us. Um, so. So that's where first, you know, God said, look, there's a, there's a line. You can only go so far. And now later on in the New Testament... Well, well, well according to the fairy tale book, of course. In Romans 5.12, it says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through man... And, 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 the, and the whole thing is, the whole thing is, it shows the subjective nature of religion showing with them. Because some people take a literal view of it. However, more rational and honest people take a more allegorical or metaphorical view of it. But this is the evidently divergent nature of belief in religious claims. And death through sin. Um, so it's clear here that because Adam sinned, when he disobeyed God, all of us suffer under sin. All of us. There is no exclusion. And they said, and death. Why not exclusion? Why is it that we, through the actions of someone else who lived, who supposedly lived, like thousands of years before we did, why should we suffer as a, as as like the result? But then again, this contingent on if this thing actually did happen, which there is little to no evidence for. In fact, like modern science and the actual knowledge that we've accumulated actually shows us to be completely inaccurate. So. Through sin, and in this way, death came to all men because all sinned. So all of us, all of us are dead spiritually because we sin, because we disobey God. We are right before God, and we don't meet His standard. We don't follow His laws. So, so God makes it clear. And moving. Okay. Um. Okay, how do I um how do I respond to this? Um we're spiritually dead because of sin. Well um well, well first of all, in regards to this whole in regards to the whole following of the religion thing, um the, the reason the the reason death exists is because it's um it's the biological result to of the termination of life, not towards anything supernatural. I mean, this is fairly simple. I mean, I mean, you know, like animals, they live and die in like uh, 
like pass on genes. This is like um this is a natural thing. This isn't this this doesn't impose anything supernatural. And it's not the and that's it's not the result of um of sin. I, I don't even know what you mean by sin. I mean there's there's behavior within a society, but I don't recognize anything such as no such concept regarding sin or anything like that. So if you could clarify that'd be nice. On in Romans three twenty three, it says, "For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ." Um, so that is actually the greatest hope of Christianity, um, is because God makes it very clear, even though everyone is a sinner, I don't care Buddhist, Hindu, atheist, um, lukewarm Christian, whatever, everyone is a sinner. Everyone. Yeah. yeah, well, it doesn't really matter what you believe, kid, because the difference between belief and knowledge, belief is a subjective opinion. Knowledge is demonstrable and measurable in its accuracy. So what you believe about other people that have different um, that have different views that are subjective in, in terms of yours, I mean, it, it really doesn't matter. You have to bring, you have to actually bring demonstrable and measurable knowledge. Quoting your holy book is not... It's not, it, it, it doesn't prove, I mean, it's circular knowledge. My, my book is true because it says it's true, or like, or, or it's whatever. So. There is no exclusion. Um, but, because God loved us, because he decided to have mercy on us. And, 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 more, and more importantly, the whole issue regarding, um, like, actually, yeah, I'll say that till the end. He gave his son, Jesus Christ, and through that, our sins were born, were taken away, because actually Jesus suffered for us. Jesus suffered for us and set us free. And if we look at one last verse today, it's Isaiah 53, 5. It says, but he was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquity. Yeah, so apparently, and, and, that, and that's a good thing too. That's wonderful. Someone got, someone was sacrificed for the good for other people. Now, if um, now if this happened in the modern world, if someone was going to be was going to be killed for for the actions of another person, there would be outrage. But this is looked upon, but suffering and dying for someone else is seen as a good thing, and within Christianity, does this seem moral or ethical? I, I don't. I don't think so. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed that is the gospel actually that through jesus christ through his for through his sacrifice through really the mercy of god we are saved that is why you need jesus you don't need jesus because he's supposed to take you to a new level no you need jesus because our lives are sinful and by his grace by his forgiveness well, that's that's a that's kind of a that's kind of a um, it's kind of a nihilistic way of looking at the world, isn't it? Our our lives aren't great without without Jesus. Well, I mean, why not try and make the world a better place through your own human effort? I mean, the reason people are moral isn't isn't a matter of of anything supernatural. It's a matter of like our society running stable for the good of um for the good of our species and for, and for the advancement of like future generations. This is. This is intrinsic within our civilization. This is not anything that supposed to be supernatural. I mean, people believe that back um back in the times of the dark ages, like people thought that um people thought the disease were brought by wickedness. But we understand through science and reason that it's a matter of like microorganisms and uh, bad hygiene. And through actually human effort and and work and research, we were able to find vaccines and and produce medicines and antibiotics to like get rid of these illnesses and alleviate these issues. So, so the whole thing regarding um, regarding invoking a supernatural thing because we're not because you believe we're not good enough to be moral on our own. I mean, it, it's it's kind of it's kind of a nihilist a, a nihilistic view of the world to be honest with you. A single pair of hands at work is worth more than a billion clasp in prayer. 
people actually being able to accumulate knowledge for the good of mankind, for the advancement and the potential it delivers to mankind through the growth of knowledge, through our own effort, it can it can deliver us unprecedented power and control and and advances that can be good for our species and essentially all life on earth and we can do this all without a belief in a deity but rather a commitment to empirical evidence reason skepticism and ultimately rational thought the one issue is that atheism is just a logical result to all of that alright uh, this has been Wolf King peace out